Touchdown! Virginia wins! The Cavaliers are going to the College World Series! He's going to go all the way to the end zone! Touchdown, Virginia! Big ball! Cavalier Sports Weekly is presented by the Virginia Lottery. The Virginia Lottery, helping Virginia's public schools. And brought to you in part by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. On this edition of Cavalier Sports Weekly, presented by the Virginia Lottery. You know, having the opportunity to play for one of the best teams in the country, the best program, you know, you couldn't, couldn't pass it. Welcome to Cavalier Sports Weekly. I'm Ken Clawson, number 27 on the men's lacrosse team. We've got a show full of highlights for you today, and we'll start with our play of the week. I couldn't breathe really, but it was a dream come true. I mean, Getting the dog piled, it was you know, having kid dreams of getting you know getting a game winning hit. For every, the whole team to come out running, it was just it was unbelievable. This portion of Cavalier Sports Weekly has been brought to you by SunTrust Mortgage. Live solid, bank solid. Stay tuned. Virginia game highlights are coming up next. This portion of Cavalier Sports Weekly is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Welcome back to the show. Our number one ranked baseball team was at home this week with Marshall on Tuesday and the Clemson Tigers this weekend. Let's check out the game stories. Here's the pitch. Gomez hits one over the head of Roberts, but Gosselin scoops it up, tags second base, then throws over to first for the double play. We have three hits. Here comes the pitch, and he slaps it again to the right fielder. Eric Semenik moving over to his left, makes the catch. Now he'll throw home, not even close. I'd imagine that we'd see uh, a bunch of different pitchers as we also threw at them, too. You know, sometimes that can be very tough to hit and get into a groove when every time you're at a bat, you're facing somebody different. Um, you know, but so our guys did a nice job of you know figuring their pitchers out and scratching them across enough runs. Now the 1-0 pitch, and it's a comebacker. Tyler Cannon, a diving scoop, makes it over to one. Now for two, in time, a fantastic double play from the Virginia Cavaliers. Goslin playing second today. Bruno takes off, and it's the hit and run. Goslin hits one into center field, and it will get past the center field fielder, Ballou. This one rolling all the way to the wall. Bruno will score. Goslin on his way to third. He slides in safely, and it's an RBI triple for Phil Goslin. We've had some uh, big innings this year with uh, with two outs. Um, you know that's a sign of a, a, a good offensive ball club that you know they don't just pack it in with with two outs. Tonight showed why he's a number one starter in this league. He doesn't have his best stuff, but he grinded it out and found a way to keep the game in check and give us six innings. That's what a true number one pitcher of the staff does. Steven Bruno's done a really nice job. He's a very talented player. Um, you know, he's just got great bat speed and he's very aggressive at the plate. and. You know, uh, when you do that, uh, you have a, a chance to be successful, and he had a big night for us. Tyler Wilson, I thought, pitched the ball really well. He, you know, he was lights out in the eighth and ninth and gave us a chance to win. The key play of the game for me was Parker's at bat. You know, he, he had two strikes on him, continued to battle. He hadn't had a hit yet uh, in the evening. and found a way to get himself on, and Warman did a great job of executing uh, to put, lay down a perfect bunt, and then uh, Barr did a nice job of executing too, and then moved the runners over, and you know, fortunately Bruno came up there and, and um, you know, got a hit there to win it. 
to win a game like that, um, you know, just builds confidence within the players, you know, that um, you always have a shot to win it, um, that if they stay together and they execute at the most important time, that um, great things can happen. I couldn't breathe, really, but it was a dream come true. I mean, getting dogpiled, it was, you know, every kid dreams of getting, you know, getting a game-winning hit. And for every, the whole team to come out running, it was just, it was unbelievable. I'll tell you, I'm so proud of Cody Winarski. You know, that uh, he showed uh, what he's made of tonight. Uh, again, after a difficult loss in the first one, he came back and, and uh, however he did it, you know, um, he may have walked a few uh, hitters. Uh, he made the big pitches when he needed to against a uh, very good uh, Clemson team. And uh, this is back to back, uh, really good uh, outings for Cody Winarski. And I think he's shown the last two weeks what he's uh, capable of doing and why I made the decision to put him in our third starting game. College baseball games are hard to win, and uh, Clemson's a tremendous opponent. You know, uh, Clemson's one of the top teams in the country, one of the top teams in this league. And um, I don't care how you win the games. Um, uh, the, re the, the thing that matters most is that we won the series against a really great team. Second baseman Keith Werman is having a great year for the Cavaliers, and he is your student athlete of the week. Kyle was a, a little gutty player that just really knew how to play the game of baseball and had great instincts and uh, really played a lot for us his last two years here at Virginia. And um, through Kyle, we got to know Keith and went and watched him play, and uh, it was a spitting image of Kyle, really. Uh, uh, same kind of player, maybe even a little bit more developed than Kyle was, and so we recruited Keith to come here and, and, and play for us, and you know, he's just been so much more than I think anybody expected. You know, playing baseball, seeing the talents and the abilities I had growing up, brother was a great role model to me, and you know, he came here, I had the opportunity to play um, under this program, and to see this stadium, to see this program and the coaching staff build it to what it is now. You know, having the opportunity to play for one of the best teams in the country, the best program, you know, they couldn't, couldn't pass it. Once I step out on the field, it's hustle. It's going out there, uh, making every play I can. You know, when I get up to, up to bat, I try to be that pest. You know, the teams don't want to don't be pitching to me. And, uh, you know, I do the best I can to, you know, help the team uh, be successful in the end. He really knows how to play the game. He's a tough player. He's a heady player. Um, as much as any player on our team, uh, the barrel of the bat finds the ball uh, uh, for him very, very frequently. And, um, you know, he can execute offensively, plays great defense, and is just a consummate team player. Now the warm one and Worman hits it into deep center field. Does it have enough diving? It's pretty for Worms to flex off his glove. So two runs will score for the Cavaliers. Werman charging into third base with a stand-up triple. Keith Werman hit that ball about as far as maybe he could. It's one of my most memorable at-bats, actually. You know, part of my approach to the plate, you know, I just go up there and, you know, observe the defense, see where they're playing me. You know, really get a great pitch to work with. You got the pitcher throwing hard, majority fastballs. Got a good pitch to put, put a good swing on and, you know, put it in the gap and just kept running the bases. He proved that he's capable of playing every day, and I felt like it made a difference in our ball club last year down our stretch run. Keith Warman in our program, um, you know, makes all the difference in the world. Not only is he a great player on the field, but he's somebody for the fans to easily fall in love with. You know, uh, maybe it's just because he's the little guy. Uh, maybe it's because he plays so hard and plays the game the right way. And I think fans and his teammates really respect that, and he adds a lot to our program. This portion of Cavalier Sports Weekly is brought to you by the Virginia Lottery. More than $4 billion to K-12 public education since 1999. The Virginia Lottery, helping Virginia's public schools. Our fifth-ranked women's lacrosse team faced JMU earlier this week. And our number one-ranked men's lacrosse team faced off against arch-rival Johns Hopkins on Saturday. Let's check out the highlights. Hugley now behind the goal, beats Donovan up the right pipe, feeds on top, man open shot, score!
Matt White off the feed from George Hughley. And the Hoos lead Hopkins three to nothing. Gives it to Stanwick behind the goal. Now feeds out top to Briggs. Briggs gets his right hand free and buries it bottom left corner. Briggs and Hughley and Holdy. We run shocker with those guys a little bit. Uh, you know, you, didn't, you probably wouldn't pick out any one of them as particularly outstanding. But, uh, but they, they play very well as a unit, and our offense runs very well when they're out there. And uh, so we don't have any hesitation to put them out there. And, you know, it gives us quality play when we got that second group in the game. So we're not just waiting to put that first group out there. And uh, we, we expect those guys to make plays and, 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 and make something happen. Donovan turns and finds Chamel Bratton. Bratton feeds to the right pipe. Man catch shot. Bounce off the pipe and in. Chris Bocklet tucks it home, and the Hoos get the lead right back. Carroll against the short stick of Spalding. Now on top to Ramel Bratton. Lots of space. Loads from 15. And stands and watches the net burn as he buried that one from distance. Virginia now leads 6-4. to four. Quick restart for Steele Stanwyck. Throws behind the goal. White. White has his defender caught up. Pulls the finalizer. Comes up the right pipe and scores! We were feeling pretty good going into the locker room at halftime and, and a sense that, uh, that we're a second-half team and we're going to come out and play well at the start of the third quarter, that doesn't always guarantee that's going to happen. Uh, but that's how it played off, played out today. I thought we, I thought we took control of the game, you know, um, after halftime, and, uh, and it really played really well in the second half. And Carroll gets it right back on top. Carroll cranks and scores. Who's lead by four? They have the rock. Out of nowhere, Ramel Brett. 3.45 to go in the third quarter. Virginia leading 9-5. to five. Chamel gets free, gives it out to Brian Carroll. Catch it, crank and score. Boyle up the right pipe. Boyle gets free. Shot saved by Gittleman again. Shoulder high, and he gives it to Shamel Bratton, who looks up at the clock. It says eight seconds. Shamel across midfield with five seconds. Race against the clock. Shamel top of the box. Switches to the right hand. Fires, and it's in! Best time expired! Shamel dodging from the logo, and Ramel turns and finds Brian. Carroll loads up. Shamel on the left wing, and he, oh my goodness. Low to high. Just caught a corner. Another goal for Virginia. Five from 30 yards away against Chris LaPierre. Burkhart loads up the right hand, shot is high and saved by Adam Gibbelman. Very skilled team Hopkins is. Uh, I thought he stood up and uh, made some big stops in the second half. You know, maybe not when the game was being decided, but when things might have gotten a little uncomfortable for us, uh, you need your goalie to do that. Uh, I thought he played very well overall. They give it up top to Boyle, across the field, finds Wharton and the shot is saved by Gibbelman again. We're playing good defense, and, and in our best years we always have. Uh, Starts with Adam, but it, but it goes to all the other guys. And as a group today, like I said, I thought we gave away a couple in the first half, uh, but I thought overall we played very well. And you know, early in the third quarter, I felt like uh, we can defend these guys. And uh, at the end of the day, that that was going to make the difference. Stall call still on Virginia as Carroll behind the goal. Double team coming from Hopkins. Carroll feeds the right pipe. Shot score! Matt White, the freshman, off the feed from Brian Carroll. In Virginia, it's starting to look like last year. Who's lead 14 to 6? One of Coach Mike London's priorities is to reach out to fans throughout the state of Virginia. And on Saturday, our football team held a unique practice scrimmage at Old Dominion University. Pleasantly surprised with the, the amount of support that was out here. And, you know, with the high school coaches that came to the clinic, I mean, it was uh, over 100, I believe, we're all the way from uh, Danville, and you know, so I, I appreciate that. And when fans come out, and you know, and they cheer you, uh, and, and the players feel that kind of uh, that kind of appreciation, and they play hard. And uh, we're, we're trying to cultivate our fan base, get them back, get them you know, behind us again, and and hopefully make Virginia uh, faithful, proud of us. 
when you get guys from any any part of the, the state, but particularly down here, then you get their whole community. And the whole community comes with it. There's, there's a lot of people that know Ross I. Dial, you know, Perry Jones. We've got some incoming freshmen, in, incoming freshmen from a local high school around here. And, uh, you know, so if you keep doing that, you only not only get the player, but you get the community. And, and that's our goal is to come down here and, you know, we get one player, then he brings his mom, his dad, his uncle, and everybody else in, in his community to come up to Charlottesville with him. So that's that's the plan. It's definitely fun, man. It's, it's a good crowd out today. A lot of people came out to show support. Just goes to show there are some, you know, a lot of Cavalier fans in Virginia. You know? It's good to see we got a good support. And I wish we had something like this when I was in school. Anytime you come down here in front of people, you want to execute, you want to do things well that, that people say, you know, they, they look sharp. So, but there are a lot of things. Our defense, I think, is going to be a good defense. Uh, we made some moves to, to, to increase our speed there. I just think our running game has is, is, is got to be on par, and it will. But, uh, you know, this is the fourth day in pads. You know, we're at the midway point, fourth day in pads, and, and uh, we'll go back and reevaluate re re where we are with the, the players that we have in the positions that we need to be successful. And, and once we do that, then, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get back on track and just keep getting out there and getting after it. I think offensively we will, you know, once we start to put the pieces in place here, we had some, some guys that were evaluating up front. I was pleased to see Tim, you know, Timmy Smith catching balls and, you know, return punts, and he's going to be dynamic. And Keith Payne actually, you know, actually looked pretty good. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll go back and we'll look at this, and then uh, we'll, we'll plan for next week's practices. Other than Mark Verica being a fifth-year guy, the rest of the quarterbacks are just kind of getting out of diapers right now. So it's... Uh, it's just one of those things. We've got to find a, a backup that can uh, can run the offense. Don't ask too much of them. Just make throws, you know, uh, make the calls, hand off to our, our backs and let the line block for them. And so if we can find a backup and then uh, and then start developing maybe another one or two, then, uh, you know, I, I think we'll be okay. We, plus, we got four more that are coming in. So it'll be a lot of talent to, uh, to evaluate a quarterback here come August. Coming up after the break. This portion of Cavalier Sports Weekly is brought to you by the Virginia Athletics Foundation. Our number one ranked men's tennis team took on five different opponents this week. We've got highlights from the two biggest matches against eighth ranked Baylor and ACC rival Miami. quickest transition we made from indoors to outdoors and it's been really smooth for us the guys haven't had any hang-ups they've just got right after it it was a very smooth transition I'm proud of our team you know they're they're tough mentally that always makes that transition go so much more quickly we just need to work and uh, we've now gotten in probably five six matches outdoors already two of the toughest teams in the country in Texas and Baylor that we've been able to beat outside so I don't think there's any difference for us anymore you know I think we're just as good indoors as we are outdoors obviously the time indoors helped us to reach our peak there but all our time is now spent out outdoors and we will continue to get better with each day but we're already playing at an extremely high level. I feel like we really want to uh, stress the fact that any ACC opponent is going to be a good match. So going into it, I feel like um, we really have to stay focused because our goal is to, to again go undefeated in the ACC and, and hopefully win another ACC championship down the road. But we got to take one match at a time. But I think it, it gives us a little, uh, a little uh, motivation to always do well in the ACC against our, our opponents. It's something that we take a lot of pride in, you know. Taking down ACC opponents is always tough. ACC is a tough conference, but um, 
you know, we treat every match the same, no matter we're, we're coming out and playing Miami or we're, we're playing for a championship. It doesn't matter. We, we try and um, come out and control what we can control and, and uh, just give our best effort every day. In other Cavalier sports action this week. Thanks for watching Cavalier Sports Weekly. We have home events in four of our sports this week, so come out, support the Cavaliers, and enjoy some great collegiate competition. Our baseball team entertains Towson in a two-game series on Tuesday and Wednesday. Women's lacrosse has two home games as well this week against Old Dominion on Tuesday and Boston College on Saturday. Our softball team has an important series Friday and Saturday against North Carolina, and our women's tennis team hosts North Carolina Friday and Duke on Saturday. We'll be back next week with coverage of those games and much more. Until then, go Hoos! Cavalier Sports Weekly is presented by the Virginia Lottery. The Virginia Lottery, helping Virginia's public schools. And brought to you in part by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance.